Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. And for those of you who don't know what that is, those are the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. Uh, tonight, I'm going on one of my night walks, and I'm going to share some of my thoughts on the martial arts with all of you. Tonight, I thought we would talk about how to train the mind for self-defense, or how to train your mind for self-protection. Um, this is a topic that I've talked about in previous videos, but when you train your mind, it's in a way... It's kind of like training the body. There's lots of different ways of doing it. When you train the physical form within martial arts, there's lots of different techniques and workouts and training programs you can do to enhance the strength of your body for self-defense, self-protection, martial arts, etc., etc. Your mind is the same way. And tonight, I thought we would take a kind of a look into that. There's been a lot of different things happened this last week or two in my personal life here at the dojo and in the online dojo. And because of these experiences, I thought I would take the opportunity to share my thoughts with you guys on this particular subject, okay? Now, before I begin, um, I want to just say real quick, if you guys are interested in um, classical Japanese martial arts or the ninja and samurai, so the koru ninjutsu or koru bujutsu, um, or if you guys are just interested in Japanese martial arts, uh, reality-based self-defense, survival skills, martial arts thoughts and philosophy, all that kind of stuff, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell. That way you guys can get all my notifications. I do post two to three videos a week and that way you guys can keep up with everything that I post. Um, but yeah, I do post a variety of videos ranging from, you know, workouts, sparring, reality-based self-defense, weapons tactics, strategies. If it has to do with martial arts, whether it's mind, body, or spirit, I'm posting videos about it. So if you guys are interested in that sort of thing and survival skills and all that, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get the updates. So, right, let's talk about the idea of when you should be training your mind and how you can strengthen your mind to deal with friction. Now, I, I use the word self-defense or self-protection, but in all reality, that's kind of a generic way of explaining what we're going to be talking about tonight. And, and I'm going to tell you why. So, when I want to, let's jump to a back, let's jump back a little bit and let's talk about the word Goshin Jutsu. So, Goshin Jutsu in traditional Japanese martial arts is like real self-defense, right? And self-defense is self-defense. You're defending yourself from something. Most people tend to think, well, that just means I learned physical techniques. You know, against a right punch, do this. Against a wrist grab, do this. Against a edged weapon, do this. Against a gun, do this. And for those of you guys who are new to my channel, I do cuss like a sailor, right? So there are just stupid ass martial artists out there that just pretend that martial arts is about physical form. If you are one of those people that just, ten, that just tends to think that all martial arts is all physical, and if I learn how to do a wrist lock and a punch, then I'm good. If you guys are just that simple, that simple, right, and that close-minded, you're probably not gonna like my channel too much, to be honest with you, because those are the kind of people that I call out. I mean, the first on masters suck, and 99.90% of all martial arts out there are bullshit, and I have no problem saying that. Most people want money, most people want rank. They wanna learn 50,000 different ways to do an arm bar. Think about how ridiculous that is. Think, well, concept, as we get going, put this in your head. Your elbow bends one fucking way. And people want to learn 150 ways to lock that arm out. Think about, the, think about that. They don't want to learn how to be a better person, how to, you know, how to survive, survival skills, uh, bet, better your character, be a better person, be a better teacher, be a better mentor, uh, help your, the people around you get better, uh, perfect other skills within. Now they want to learn, I know, 3,000 different ways on how to lock an elbow. Well, good for you. But, I mean... You know, it's just ridiculous. You never see why well, I know 3,000 ways to lock a finger. I mean, it's a joint. I don't see why they're getting, why they got such a, you know, a hard on for just wanting to learn this, this idea of just the elbow. So the people that think like that are not going to understand this lesson. And I wanted to start with that, right? Because you do have these first on masters that think all martial arts, I just want to learn a new technique and learn technique. The problem with that is the martial arts is about the mind, the body, and the spirit. So when you learn the physical technique, it should transcend and get to a deeper point within your training. When you deal in the world of self-defense, self-defense, again, it's defending of yourself. Something is attacking you, and you have the techniques to overcome and protect yourself or defend yourself against this specific attack. That is not only in the realm of physicality, so it's a physical attack. It could be a mental attack. It could be an emotional attack. It could be a spiritual attack, but no matter what, you have to learn how to protect yourself against all of any attack. So, so many times you get these really weak ass martial artists 
that you know they puff their chest up and they're like yeah you know we're gonna learn this 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 and don't get me wrong you you have to learn the physical skills of martial arts anyone who watches my channel you guys know we spar we grapple we lift weights we do full contact training of course you have to have that with this but that is part of martial arts training but that's not the only part of martial arts training tonight we're gonna talk about the other part that no one wants to deal with no one wants no one wants to work on their mind or their their spirit or their emotional training because it's too much work the reality of it is everyone wants to work on the physical stuff because it's easily seen it's like people well I want to I want to do this because it makes me look good right if I wear a black belt or if I have more than one or if I do this 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 or I have the physical technique people can see that and people will think that I'm good because it's very visual no one can see how mentally strong you are right no one can see how emotionally strong you are no one can physically see how spiritually strong you are maybe they might come to realize that you are but they realize that through your actions not by visually looking at that where you could watch someone do martial arts and you can tell whether they're decent or good or have any technique or not so there are lots of people who are just martial art jokes they know how to do certain tricks and they know how they know the lingo they know the terminology and they know how to you know do certain things and they they they, they con people into bullshit right and I would tell you guys right now, the, the majority of people that I've seen in the martial arts that are absolute just bullshit are the people that wear a black belt and they jump around from one organization to the next. Those are the ones that's the most mo emotionally and mentally weak of all. You know what I mean? It's like they just can't stick. You know, it's usually because they got rubbed the wrong way. They didn't like, you know, it's like a little kid getting all pissed off and they leave the party because someone told them no. You know what I mean? It's like shit like that. But... But this is the idea that we're talking about today. When something rubs you wrong, how do you deal with it? So there's your pre, all that was your preview into this. And so now we're gonna talk about a scenario. When people do things and they get upset or whatever it is, you know, they're all mentally, you know, distraught and they tend to go somewhere and they shut the door and they just shut themselves off from society and they go into silence. You know what I mean? It's like the monk. It's like they sit up on the top of the mountain and they meditate for four years in the middle of nowhere, right? Well, anyone can find enlightenment when they don't have any friction. You know, it's like learning how to punch and kick in the air. I mean, you know, anyone can punch and kick in the air, but can you do it when someone's whooping the shit out of your ass? That's what you're physically training for. The martial arts is physical, mental, and emotional. So just because today we're gonna to talk about the mind aspect of training, please don't take this that my school only does the mental shit. Go look at my channel. We, we are very physical, okay? Just throwing that out there. But the, the, the reality of, that is that a lot of people will be like, oh my God, I need to go in the middle of, I just gotta go somewhere where no one can bother me and I can sort out my thoughts. All right, well you can go do that, but at the end of the day, just cause you sort shit out and you organize it in your head, that doesn't change the situation. And whenever you get it all sort, sorted out, you gotta come back to the situation. So how can you deal with it? That's the number one key and that's what we're gonna talk about today, okay? So let's paint this picture. This individual gets all sorts of pissed off and like, fuck it, I'm just gonna move out in the middle of nowhere, we're gonna go out in the middle of wherever and just fuck it all, right? So they move off, they go somewhere, and they think if they do this, then life is gonna be good. Then they find out that life is just the absolute same. Just because they ran from a problem, the problem still exists. Just because it doesn't change the problem. The problem's still the problem. You just moved away from the problem. You still gotta deal with the fucking problem. So you get there, and then you, you, know, you organize shit in your head, and you're trying to start a new life, or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Meditate underneath the rock for four years, or whatever it is, right? You start going through this process, and then you find enlightenment, you find balance, you find calmness of mind, peace of mind. And I'm sure, every, I'm sure you would. Anyone who goes off in the middle of nowhere and they don't interact with anybody will probably become very peaceful. Because there's nothing, there's nothing to rub you wrong. There's no friction, right? Life is about friction. Life is about pain. Life is about constant ups and downs, ups and downs. It's like a heartbeat. It's like thunk, 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 thunk. There's up and down, up and down, up and down. Constant. And it's never going to be like this. Anyone who tells you that's lying, they're full of shit. And what you have to be able to step back when you feel that friction and apply the correct technique. So, when someone comes that you guys know from a reality based self defense perspective, you guys train, I can only speak from ninjutsu, but if you're speaking in ninjutsu and someone approaches you with an edged weapon or a firearm or a, a blunt force uh, weapon and they're going to try to cause you harm, you understand, well, if they're in this position, I do this. If they're in that kamai, I'm going to be in this kamai. If they do this, I can do this. What they're doing is going to dictate how I react or act to the situation, whether I decide to do a, you know, uh, a, a, a quicker attack or to attack them or, you know, a preemptive strike or maybe a defensive motion or maybe some sort of evasion technique, but the situation will kind of aid itself and kind of giving you the, the red flag, if you will, to know what you need to do when you need to do it. 
So we train in that realm a lot in martial arts, and most martial arts do. And this isn't a mar this isn't a video for what kind of martial arts are good, bad, or other. It's whatever you do is what you do. If you think it's good for you, then go on with it, right? But when the mental thing happens, when something hits you and it's like, God damn, it's pissing me off. You know, this person's pissing me off. This happened at work. This happened at school. This happened at church. This happened at the dojo. This happened at whatever. And there's that mental friction. That's the moment where you have to then assume the same thing. When you recognize what type of attack it is mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you need to assume the correct Kamai to do what you need to do to effectively take care of that specifically that specific type of attack. Now the attack doesn't have to be an attack towards you personally. So here we go, this is gonna be a situation. When you deal with friction, when you deal with frustration, frustration is the attack. That can come in a variety of different ways. Shit, you could be frustrated just because you were trying to do something and you didn't do it effectively or you didn't do it the way you wanted to do it. Therefore, you're frustrated. You still have to deal with that. That frustration is still an attack. It's a mental thing that you gotta deal with. You need to protect yourself from that. So the other day, I'm going out and uh, me and my daughter were driving around and we went to, um, about a week or so ago, we went to Vintage Stock. And um, I think we are just buying, it was in the morning, it was before I had to take her to school. So we were going out to Vintage Stock and we're gonna look at some things. And uh, we get in there, we're the only ones in there. My, 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 do my youngest daughter's four. So we get in there and we start looking at stuff and little Juliana, she looks at me and she says, Mama, um, she says, Mama, I, I gotta go pee-pee. I'm like, shit, we're right in the middle of the store too, you know? And I'm like, damn, babe, why didn't you go before we left? <laughs> she goes, I gotta go pee-pee. So I said, okay, okay, okay. So I talked to the, there was a gentleman and a woman behind uh, uh, the counter. And I said, excuse me, sir. I said, my, my little girl needs to go to the bathroom. May I please use your restroom? And he looks at me in this kind of like, kind of a fuck you attitude kind of thing. And he's like, we don't have a public restroom. Nobody, uh, first of all, I know they have a public restroom just simply because I have another daughter and I've, I've, she's had to go to the bathroom there before and they had no problem then when she had to use the restroom. But you know, anyway, we're, I needed to put that out there. So I'm like, I looked at him, I said, she's four years old. I, I said, you won't let her go to the bathroom? You won't let her use the restroom? And he's like, it's a, you know, and he's like, we don't, he just repeated himself in this kind of, this, this kind of an asshole type. We don't have a public restroom. So I grabbed her and I just ran out, went next door to the Big Biscuit and uh, let her go potty there. And from there, I'm like, you know, I tried to, I didn't want to make her feel like, you know, something was bad or anything. So I said, all right, Jules, you want to go, want to go to Wendy's and get some lunch? She, me, Juliana and I, we go to Wendy's a lot and have some lunch. So we get to Wendy's and we start eating and I'm fuming. Cause in my head, of course she doesn't know that, but in my head I'm like, God damn, that takes, you know what I mean? I mean, it takes every time, everything we have in life, we have an opportunity to be better and to help other people. And when you literally don't help someone and do the right thing to help somebody and you want to blame you being an asshole on your religion or you being an asshole on company policy, you're just an asshole. I mean, I don't care how the fuck you want to shake that stick. If you're going to use company policy or religion or upbringing or, you know, in our culture, it's like this. I don't give a shit. If you're acting like an asshole, you're an asshole across the board. And if you're a martial artist, you should strive to not be an asshole. You know what I mean? So I'm sitting there at Wendy's and Jul me, Julie and I, we get our meal and I like, I look it up, you know, vintage stock, blah, blah, blah. And it's the one on Shawnee Mission Parkway and Quivira. It's in this little shopping center. Anyway, he, uh, I, call, I call the store and a woman answered and I said, excuse me, ma'am. I said, can I speak to the gentleman that was there? I said, when I was there with my daughter and there was a gentleman there that I asked if I could use the restroom and he said there was no public restrooms and I would like to talk to him. So he gets on the phone and I said, and he says, um, and he says, you know, can I help you? And I'm blah, blah, blah. And I explained who I was. He goes, okay, yeah, I remember. And I'm like, you know, I said, well, like, why didn't you let a four-year-old use the restroom? You literally ran us out of the business. So we have to run next door. And I'm like, what the hell? You know what I mean? And he's like, well, it's company policy. And I'm like, no. And I said, you can't blame you being an ass 
on company policy. I said, I understand you don't have one to everybody that walks in the door. I get it. You know what I mean? You don't want all the teenagers in there and blah, 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 and all that kind of shit. And, and I understand. But I also think that there's a little bit of like, a little bit of check to that too. There should be a little bit of like, you know, use your personal discretion. Here I am, stay at home mom, walking in at like 10 30 or 11 in the morning when all the kids are in school with a four year old little girl looking at Wonder Woman comic books with my daughter and she needs to go pee. Like, what the harm is letting a four year old go potty? So I asked him, I'm like, Seriously, you don't need to blame company policy on you being an asshole. I said, why? I, said, I'm, I just said, why? what stopped you from allowing us to do that? I said, I think that it's terrible for you to let someone out the door and instead of just being a good person and helping someone, you threw someone out the door and threw a four-year-old running next door to another business hoping that she could get to the bathroom before she you know, went potty in her pants. And I can't remember what he said. And he said something like, well, if you want to speak to my manager, I'll be more than happy to give you the manager's number. And I said, I don't need to speak to your manager. I don't need to get you in trouble. I'm not going to write you up. I'm not going to make no formal complaint. I said, what I'm trying to do is explain to you on how not to be an asshole. I said, if it was the other way around and I was working there and I saw a four-year-old that needed to go to the bathroom, I said, I would have told him it's the first door to the right. And he didn't say anything and he says, well, I'm really sorry. And there was other things there too, kind of guilt and a little guilt trip in there a little bit. And there were some other little things I threw in there at him. And I'm just like, it's really, I said, this is the problem with society today. So many people are like, no, I've got to follow. I've, it's got to be company policy. I've got to do this for money. And you know, it's all about money. It's all about company policy. It's not about good morals. It's not about respect. It's not about honor. It's not about discipline. You know, I told him, I'm like, you know, you might want to rethink your shit. Because, I mean, I said, you know, you, you, maybe you're doing your job, but, you're not be, but that's not being kind. And I said, if the shoe was on the other foot and I was the one behind the counter and you were the one with a four-year-old little kid that needed to go potty, I would have let you gone. After I made that phone call, I felt better. And the reason I'm making this phone call is when you get frustrated, what I did is I didn't yell at the guy. I didn't, you know, ream him right there, although I wanted to. Uh, I didn't come out of the big biscuit next door and being like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. No, left, went to Wendy's got some food, sat down, thought about it, then called him up and been like, dude, what the fuck? And a lot of times, that is the best bet. In ninjutsu, we talk about endurance, perseverance, the ability to overcome, but the big thing is patience, right? And uh, like best distance, best timing, only one chance. And when you, when you let your emotions, and don't get me wrong, did I have emotions? Yes, was I a little pissed off? Absolutely. Did I let those emotions override the decisions that I took? No. You can't make a decision based on emotion. So when we talk about how does that translate into self-defense, it's the same thing. When you run into something that's frustrating you, that gives you friction, take a step back, assume the correct position, and then use, devise a strategy that you feel that will help you in the best way positive. If I felt the best way positive for me was to make a phone call and express myself in a nice way and say, you know what, I don't feel that you know, telling a four-year-old to run next door is what a good person would let someone do. I would never do that to somebody, but that's just me. I mean, the one reason why I get walked on so much, and I do, there's a lot of people that take advantage of my ass all the time in the martial arts. I mean, I could give you a list of names of people who have stuck it to me, lied to me, stabbed me in the back, you know, fucking, you know, <laughs> I give you a fucking list. And, um, and the reason for that is because I do trust people. I do put myself out there. I do try to help people as much as I can. I do live by the idea that people will treat you the way that you treat them. And even though I know that's not true, I know that isn't gonna be true. I know there are gonna be people, I mean, there are gonna be, there are gonna be 100, 100 times more people gonna fuck me over, lie, betray, steal from me to the day I die. It's gonna happen. There's gonna be thousands of people do it. You know what I mean? But it's not about the people that fuck you over and give you friction. It's about all the people that I'm helping along the way. So there's going to be those dips. You're gonna have good days, you're gonna have bad days. There are gonna be days where you'll be depressed, you'll have anxiety, fear, all these kind of things, you're stressed out. You need to just step back from the situation. But taking yourself off the fucking beaten path and going out in the middle of nowhere and like meditating under a rock away from society does not solve the problem. Because the problem is that there's friction because of other people. And this is where, I, I know this is like a long ass lesson, but 
this idea where people are like, I'm just going to move to the middle of nowhere, I'm just going to move out in the middle of Timbuktu somewhere, or I'm just going to do this, I'm going to do this, and they, they, they go off and they meditate in the fucking two-week binge in the middle of nowhere, you know, that doesn't do anything. Because as soon as you leave that environment, you come back to life, cars honking at you, people cussing, news, people dying, school shooting, all this kind of shit, you know, and it's just constant boom, 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 boom. And there's all this negativity surrounding you. You have to be able to have balance of your mind, your body, your spirit, and your emotions in conflict. Whether that's an argument, whether that's frustration you're giving yourself, whether that's something that someone's telling you, uh, you know, whatever the situation is, it's kind of like martial arts. I mean, you can go and hit a heavy bag all you want. You can work on technique, you can work on how to throw this punch or how to throw this that kick or whatever it is, right? But just because you're doing those things and you could throw the perfect jab on a heavy bag, that doesn't mean you have the adequate skills to be able to do it when someone's whooping your ass. You know, you can go down the list and you can be like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do when someone says, I'm fat, or I'm too skinny, or I'm weak, or I'm ugly, or whatever it is, you know? Well, okay, you can go down your checklist all you damn well want, but then when you got someone up in your face, and they're reaming you, do you have the skills then to stay calm, find balance, and handle the situation appropriately? And if not, you need to do that. The situation, the, the, the situation arises, and that's when you do the training. You can't, you can always think about the process and the process is the process, but thinking about it doesn't mean you're moving forward. Thinking about it is just a way to develop a strategy. Actually, actual Keiko, or the physical training of the martial arts, is where you get to test those skills, whether it's sparring, grappling, kickboxing, drills, or whatever we're doing. You get to test your skills from the kata and the waza when you spar and all that kind of stuff. Same thing here, you have the strategy, okay, when someone says, I'm fat, or I'm ugly, or I'm too skinny, or I'm overweight, or, you know, I, I'm a transgendered woman, so it's like people just shit talk me all the time, all the fucking time. I can make a video, but I am going to make a video about that. I'm going to show you guys what one week of <laughs> comments in my YouTube section looks like. You think you guys would be fucking shocked. Be like, but, you know, no matter what strategy you come up with, that's good that you can meditate on that. But if you can't take that strategy and apply it, towards life, in life, then it's worthless. You know, even Miyamoto Masashi says in the Book of Five Rings, do nothing of no use. Do not, you know what I mean? Do nothing of no use. So if you're gonna train to fight, then you need to train to learn how to fight. And that fighting is not just in the mental realm, I mean, the physical realm. It's mentally, it's emotionally, it's spiritually. You need to learn how to protect yourself in all realms. And too many people don't want to do that because they can't, they can't brag about it but they can hide it. You can always hide that shit because if you know you're mentally weak, if you know you're stupid and ignorant, and you know, and most people when they are stupid, they, they know it. You don't have to tell them they're stupid. You know, they know it. That's why they learn all the lingo. They learn all the cool words and the terminology of this Ryuha and that Ryuha and this, this book and they learn this book and that book. Yeah, well, okay, it's great that you learned that book, but that book was written by someone who don't train. They have no skills in the martial arts. They suck to begin with. And they're writing this book based on their very elementary knowledge of the subject that they're writing about. So just because you learn the terminology doesn't mean what you're saying is accurate and true to form. But people don't think about that either. Now some people write books and they're great. Some people write books and they're shit. So just because it's in a book form doesn't mean that it's accurate, right? So you always have to be careful where you're getting your knowledge. But my point with that is so many people who are mentally weak, they back it up because they say, well, I got this from this book, or I got this from this book. Well, if, if they had real skills, they would know that that's wrong. But they don't have real skills, so they don't know that it's wrong, so they just go with it anyway. And that's why we got this, that's why 99% of martial arts is just bullshit. Most people who do martial arts, they're enthusiasts, they're not actually martial artists. A martial artist is someone who physically trains in the art to be a better fighter, a better combatant in the physical realm of self-defense, self-protection, combative skills. They train their minds, to be better under conflict. They train their spirit and spiritual power, spiritual essence to be better under conflict. They train their emotion to be better under conflict. Some martial artists, okay? Um, someone who's like, well, you know, I'm gonna read such and such translation on Saturday, and I'm gonna go to the dojo one day a week, or I'm gonna go from this organization two years later, that organization three years later, that organization three years later, that organization. Those are just enthusiasts. Those are people who like a hobby. They want to learn a new trick. They want to learn the 500 ways to do a fucking arm bar. You know what I mean? But they're never going to be a master. At best, they're a jack of all trades. 
And the skill set of those trades doesn't mean that they know what the fuck they're doing either. You know what I mean? So you have to be, you have to be very careful about who you're talking to and where you're getting your information from. So when you're devising, when you're talking about mental strength in the martial arts, here's my outro for you guys. If you're talking about mental strength in the martial arts, you should sit there and really study the psychological makeup of everything that pisses you off. See, that's what the meditation's about. The meditation is internal. You need to understand you, right? The very first cone in Samurai uh, Bujutsu, the, what you should learn is know thyself. So that's what you're studying. You're meditating. What pisses you off? Why does it piss you off? When does it piss you off? How does it piss you off? You go through your checks and balances of how that's worked in life, how you could have appropriately handled that situation, and how you could better that situation if it happens again. Then when that situation arises, instead of getting pissed off and losing your emotion, I could have been like, why are you being an asshole? You're not letting my kid go to the bathroom. There's nobody in the store. And I'm literally looking at the bathroom door. I know that's the bathroom door. Why can't she go in there? You know what I'm saying? No, instead of doing that, walk out, handle your shit, reflect, and then you have the opportunity to get the repetition to correctly handle the situation the way it should be handled. And the more that you do that, the more repetition you get, the better you're gonna be at it. Then you can learn to start understanding how to handle yourself in stress, whether it's not just the physical realm, but the mental realm, the emotional realm, and the spiritual realm. So. That's my little rant for the night, uh, about a 30 minute video. Sorry so long, but uh, hopefully some of you guys, if you stayed this long, kudos to you. If you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, please check out my website at www.budodunjutsu.com. Uh, there you can see a list of our schools, uh, the different philosophies and strategies that we train with, uh, the different areas of training, and the seven warrior traditions that we teach. If you do not live next to one of our schools, you can always join the Budodukai Online Ninjutsu Dojo, and you can train with us through our online Ninjutsu Dojo as well. Again, that's www.budodunjutsu.com. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell for notifications. So thank you guys very much for all of your love and support. Until next time, take care, be safe. And good luck in your journey of Voodoo.